With the release of HomePod, Apple threw their hat in the smart speaker ring after seeing companies like Amazon and Google experience success in the market. But Apple decided to approach the smart speaker from a different angle, by making sound quality the product's primary focus instead of its voice assistant. And this created some issues that's preventing the HomePod from competing on the same level as the Amazon Echo and Google Home. And despite being on sale for well over a year, the HomePod hasn't achieved the kind of success Apple was aiming for, capturing just 6% of the smart speaker market at the end of 2018. And in this video, we're going to explore the reasons why the HomePod is failing to live up to Apple's expectations. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank Rocket Body for sponsoring this video. Rocket Body is an app that uses an ECG reading from your Apple Watch to measure your readiness for different types of workouts. Try out the free trial today by clicking the link in the description. Now, if you want to help decide which video topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed and these voting polls will show up in your mobile activity feed. So before we talk about Apple's struggles with the HomePod, I should mention that this wasn't Apple's first attempt at making a speaker system. Back in 2006, the company introduced the iPod Hi-Fi, which was a stereo speaker designed to work seamlessly with any iPod. It actually came with eight different docks that you could switch out depending on which iPod model you were using. And while the iPod Hi-Fi wasn't a smart speaker, it did share a couple similarities to the HomePod. First being its focus on sound quality. There were a lot of stereo speakers dedicated to the iPod back then, some of which, like the iHome, were very popular. But they didn't offer high fidelity sound quality. And we're seeing the same trend today with smart speakers, the most popular of which, like the Amazon Echo and Google Home, don't offer best in class sound. Instead, their voice assistant features are their biggest selling points. But there's one more similarity between the HomePod and iPod Hi-Fi, and that is their price. They both debuted with price tags of $350, which is pretty steep considering other products on the market. In fact, the HomePod's competitors share the same $100 price point as the iPod Hi-Fi's biggest competitor, the iHome. So it's actually pretty fascinating how similar the modern smart speaker market is compared to the iPod speaker market of the mid-2000s. So it shouldn't be too surprising that the HomePod is experiencing similar issues as the iPod Hi-Fi, one of the biggest being sales success. Apple struggled to convince customers that the $350 iPod Hi-Fi offered three and a half times the value of the $100 iHome. Sure, the Hi-Fi had better sound quality, but that was about it. And considering the iHome had a built-in digital clock, a more compact and portable form factor, and a much more affordable price, you can see why the iPod Hi-Fi was a hard sell. Apple eventually discontinued the product one year after its release, just as rumors of an iPod Hi-Fi Mini were picking up steam. Now, how does that circumstance compare to the HomePods? Well, again, there are some similarities and differences. The HomePod is also having a hard time convincing customers that it's worth $350. In fact, soon after it was released, Apple had to cut their HomePod orders from $500,000 a month to $200,000 due to lack of demand. And that wasn't the only cut Apple had to make. This past July, they cut the HomePod's price from $350 to $300. But according to recent reports, that still wasn't enough to bolster demand. So why isn't Apple selling as many HomePods as they expected? After all, it does have some incredible features that the failed iPod Hi-Fi never did. Things like Siri, adaptive sound, stereo support, AirPlay, native Apple Music support, a microphone array, and even a more compact design. So what's preventing customers from making the purchase? Well, the answer becomes clear when you take a look at what the Amazon Echo and Google Home have to offer. For just $100, the Echo offers what some are calling amazing sound, in addition to an extensive list of smart speaker features. Not only does it natively support the free and paid versions of Amazon Music, but the Echo also works with Prime Music, Pandora, TuneIn, iHeart, Spotify, and Sirius XM. The HomePod only natively supports Apple Music. If you want it to play songs from any other service, you'll have to use AirPlay from an Apple device. You can also use more voice commands with the Amazon Echo, including ordering items from Amazon. With the HomePod, you're limited to whatever Siri is capable of doing. So there are clear compromises Apple is making with the HomePod by emphasizing sound quality above all else. And while this may be a good approach for audiophiles, the vast majority of customers are more than satisfied with a smart speaker that sounds good enough and costs a third of the price. 
And if you take a look at the HomePod's website, you'll notice that Apple doesn't put a heavy emphasis on Siri in its marketing. The voice assistant is actually the last feature listed. And this approach may sound familiar since it's one they took with the AirPods, which has Siri integration, but are first and foremost wireless headphones. And Apple actually suggests this connection between the two products by using the same pod suffix in their names. And I think that's important to recognize, because if Apple anticipated demand for the HomePod would be even half of what it was for the AirPods, it makes sense that they were preparing to sell half a million units a month. But we know Apple wasn't even close to reaching those targets, and the reason comes down to the approach they took with the HomePod. You see, there are two different ways of thinking about a smart speaker. The first way is thinking of it as a personal assistant like the Amazon Echo, a product that helps you buy things from Amazon, create reminders, set timers, or answer trivial questions just by using your voice. There's not a focus on high fidelity audio. But the second way of thinking about a smart speaker is completely different, which is the direction Apple took with the HomePod. It does include some of the personal assistant capabilities of the Amazon Echo, it just doesn't focus on those features. Instead, Apple positioned the product as a high-fidelity speaker system, just like they positioned the AirPods as high-quality wireless headphones. And so it really isn't fair to compare the Google Home or Amazon Echo to the HomePod, since it's a fundamentally different product. The problem is, it's still technically a smart speaker and included in the same market. Now, even though the HomePod is failing to meet Apple's sales forecasts, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a failed product. Apple doesn't release unit sales numbers anymore, but it's estimated that they sold 2 to 2.5 million HomePods in its first 12 months on the market. And that is comparable to the 2.4 million Amazon Echo units that were sold in its first year. The only problem is Amazon almost tripled those numbers in the product's second year, which the HomePod shows no signs of doing. It's also worth noting that while the HomePod only has about 8 to 9% of the smart speaker market, it's a $300 product competing with not only $100 speakers like the Amazon Echo and Google Home, but also $50 speakers like the Echo Dot and Google Home Mini. And many believe Apple recognizes the HomePod's pricing issue, and it's why there's rumors of a stripped-down, lower-cost model in the works. But what's fascinating to me about all this is how similar the HomePod story is playing out compared to the iPod Hi-Fi over a decade ago. Because the Hi-Fi also failed to meet Apple's sales forecast, it also captured about 7% of the iPod speaker market, it was also competing against lower-cost rivals which compromised on sound quality, and rumors also surfaced of Apple making a stripped-down model at a lower price point. So in my mind, it's worth asking if the HomePod story will end the same way as the Hi-Fi. Will it be discontinued sometime this year? Well, it's hard to say, but I highly doubt it, and here's why. With the iPod Hi-Fi, it was clear Apple wasn't making any improvements or investing any more time or money into the product shortly before it was discontinued. But when it comes to the HomePod, the story changes quite a bit. Apple is continuing to roll out the HomePod internationally, with its most recent release in Japan on August 23rd. And I don't think that's something Apple would bother doing if they were taking it off the market in the coming months. Also, new software features are being rolled out to the HomePod this fall with iOS 13. You'll actually be able to hand off music you're playing from your phone to the HomePod by simply holding your device near the speaker. And again, that demonstrates resources are being invested in the product, which didn't happen with the iPod Hi-Fi. So while the HomePod may very well be a failure at this point in time, I don't think it'll see the same fate as the iPod Hi-Fi. Because although it isn't selling as well as Apple had hoped, it's still generating quite a bit of revenue for the company and further entrenching users in services like Apple Music. And with new software features coming to the HomePod, it's pretty clear that Apple isn't giving up on the product just yet. And I think we may be seeing a new lower cost model in the near future, which could really boost Apple's position in the smart speaker market. Now, let's talk about a product that's been a wild success, and that's the Series 4 Apple Watch, which gives you the ability to take ECG readings right from your wrist. And now, thanks to the technology developed at Rocket Body, that ECG reading can be used to turn your Apple Watch and iPhone into a personal fitness trainer. The Rocket Body app provides precise readings of your body condition during a training session and throughout the day, determining your readiness for the next workout. 
but my favorite feature of the app is its ability to completely personalize my training. Customized workouts are generated based on my physical condition, taken through the ECG immediately before the workout starts. This ensures my time at the gym is used efficiently to achieve my fitness goals as soon as possible. So if you do any sort of exercise, I highly recommend trying this app out, which you can do for free with a 14-day trial. The link for that is in the description. And be sure to leave a review on Product Hunt to let the developers know what you think of the app. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.